Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to make another cute little hat today. Um, we're not really doing anything special. We're just doing flat cut, well not flat colors, that's not true. I've got some of this left over from the last hat that I did a feral oil hat with and I just thought that I would just do a plain old hat. This is uh, loops and threads, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right there. Uh, facets. And the color is electric and it sure is because it's got some fabulous colors in here. One of which is this orangey color, which there isn't a whole lot of. So I thought I would take some of my loops and threads, Orange Crush, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, no, actually this is Fire Red. Why does it look so orange? <laughs> this is Fire Red, but it really matches that color in there. So I decided I was going to take some of this and I was going to do um, just a little hat. So get whatever colors you're you're going to do your hat with. So to start things off I'm going to load my machine with my facets. Oh, I might have already started a knot. Find my white peg which is back here. So if you don't know how to load a machine, it's forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So in front, behind, in front, behind. Your um, instructions for your machine should tell you how to do it. But we'll focus in this area. So when you come back around, you should be behind this last stitch. And I know it's hard to see. You can only see my white one. Um, put your color into your carriage. And make sure that this is still wrapped around your white. If the string is long enough, it should still be there. So my first round, I don't like to count with my counter. I have this in the tightest tension, by the way. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see. Oh, I can't really see my tension thing but it's in the tightest one which is the one up against the machine the first row is going to put them on every other peg so it's, I'm not going to count the first row I've reset my counter after I do the first row so I'm going to watch my first couple of rows. I'm going to do them manually before I use my tool because um, I just want to make sure everything's doing its job. This is what I'm using. This is just a drill. And you can buy these ends um, to go around your handle to make it faster. So I'll be using that in this video. The first round we're going to do is going to be 40 rows. So I am just about at my, there's my 40 rows right there. So um, I'm going to cut this off. Oh, I'm going to zoom out a bit here, a bit more. So I'm going to cut this off where I have a bit of a tail. And I'm going to make sure it's wrapped around my white peg. Actually, I should have brought you in. So I'm going to make sure it's wrapped around my white peg. And then I'm going to add my new color. And 
and I'm going to make sure that note the uh, pin number one catches it. So I'm just going to put that in my tight tension. I've never used this in my machine, this particular one, so I'm not sure how it's going to work out for me. So I will put it in the tight tension just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to be doing 50 rows. When both of my needles have caught my yarn, that's when I like to tie them together. I don't like to wait until I have a great big gaping hole. So, but I am not a stranger to tension when it comes to this machine. So if you're still fairly new at it, then I, I, I wouldn't do this if I were you. But I am not a stranger to tension. I have been doing this for a while. So I'm going to cut it off. It doesn't have to be excessively short because it, you're never going to know it's inside the hat when we're done. So I'm going to do my 50 rows, but I'm going to first see how my machine acts manually to the yarn I've never used in it. It seems to be good. Put it on every single pin, so... So now you, we go until our marker or our counter says 90. So I'm going to cut off my red, orange, <laughs> whatever color it's supposed to be, and then make sure it wraps around my white needle, if you can see that. Sorry, that's my phone making that noise. And then I add back my electric into my carriage so that needle number one picks it up and I'm gonna do 40 rows but I'm first gonna make sure that I get these two tied together so if you want a larger brim you can do more than 50 rows and I'm gonna do 40 rows to finish off the hat with my little tool so when your marker says 130 that's when you can stop One more round. So oh, that's my 130. So when you go to cast off, you need enough that it's going to cover going around. So um, I did do shorts for casting off. I just want to reiterate that. Um, there's no need to be in, in a great hurry when you're casting off that, you know, some of these people tell you to spin it all the way around without yarn and you're just risking dropping stitches and I just think it's a dumb idea. So I do one at a time until I have the space to do more than one at a time. I try not to be in a huge rush because I don't really feel like I've put this work into it to lose my stitches. So... I just go one at a time, like I said, until I have the space.
I'll meet you at the craft table. Alrighty. So, if you haven't tied any of your business <clears throat> on the other side, you know where I was tying my color changes. If you haven't done that, then you're going to have to flip this inside out and tie your stuff together. Mine are already done, so I'm going to stretch. So the reason people stretch out their work is because it just relaxes the stitches. And then we can pull. <clears throat> Just gonna cut a little bit off for sewing. There's always so much after you pull. So after you pull your hole closed, you're gonna want to secure that. I like to do it both directions. Um, I'm going to put a pom pom on the top of this, so I'm not going to really worry about what that looks like. And I haven't decided which one's going in the hat and which one's not. It all depends on what colors I got. So we're going to pull this end closed. I'm just going to cut some of this off. Just so it's a little more manageable. Oh, I think I want this to be my top. It's got this beautiful blue and purple around it. So this is going to be my top. But if you want yours to be a little more Christmassy, you can do the more of the... There's so many different vibrant colors in here. So this end is the one I'm going to shove up inside. So I like to start poking through my center hole and then I just kind of pinch it here and I shove my hand up. That's how I like to shove it up inside. Now don't put the hole or the, the needle all the way through because it'll grab on everything you're doing. But just so that you know you're right directly in the middle. And then when I get to the top, I'm just going to continue with my hand to poke that through the middle of that top. And then I shake it and I know that both of the insides are exactly even. And again, I'm going to cut some off so it's a little manageable up here. And I'm going to tie some knots. So I'm going to do two really tight. I'll just leave it as a beanie. So I made my two knots, which is good because then they can still see the top. Beautiful top part of the hat. So I'm going to weave in between the two layers. It doesn't really matter how far you weave. But when you cut this, leave a little tail on the outside. So when you leave the little tail on the outside, you can see it there. You just have to pull it inside. 
And then you know it's long enough that it's not going to be poking out all willy-nilly here and there. I don't know. The, I may be a little too anal when it comes to stuff like that. So I'm just going to weave my green. And yes, yeah, so I did try to weave down into the color that it is. <laughs> Again, just anal. Here we go. I'm going to still stretch this out a bit. So I think that's pretty close to matchy. Matchy, matchy. This is a little darker, but kind of lightens things up nicely on your hat. There we go. That's awesome. So again, the colors I use, this is Fire Red from Loops and Threads Impeccable. And this is Loops and Threads Facets. And the color is electric. So that's what I used. And it turned out super duper good. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.